What's up guys, it is IRGT85 and I guess Cameron's joining us today as well. But we have a surprising amount of video game news to cover from the weekend. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. And we're gonna start things off with a company that I've been a bit harsh on lately and that is Arcade 1UP. Now, let's be real, I love Arcade 1UP, but I also don't love some of their decisions. I have a whole fleet of Arcade 1UP machines because I know that I'll probably never own an official or real arcade cabinet they're big they're heavy you have to have like a pickup truck to bring them to your house and it's just sort of a pain to actually track down one of these cabinets restore them to working order if there's some problems and then have them in your home whereas arcade one up you just buy them online and they ship them to your house and you build them in an hour and then you're good to go well arcade one up of course has been sort of raising the prices for a lot of arcade cabinets and the x-men cabinet was kind of the final straw for me i really wanted the x-men arcade one up cabinet but it was just like I don't know, it's too expensive, $700, I don't need a light up marquee. I don't need all this fancy stuff, I just need the basic system that has the games on it in order to play this. So I decided to pass on the X-Men Arcade 1UP, and I honestly thought that maybe my time with Arcade 1UP had sort of moved on. I'd gotten a lot of these systems for, you know, three or $400, and that was much more manageable to me than like $700, because that just seems like a lot of money. Well, these bastards at Arcade 1UP have reeled me back in, because a new leak happened happened over the weekend about a Canadian retailer about a brand new arcade one-up cabinet and it's just like I have to have this I, ha I have to have this like this is so cool so the new system that has leaked is apparently a Terminator 2 arcade like gun shooter and it's like man I, I need this I need this now a Canadian retailer listed this Michael B the game genie was the one who actually discovered this he's big in the arcade one-up community I'll have a link to his channel in the description box down below make sure you guys go check out Mike B a uh, friend of mine for a very long time a very good dude but yes this appears to be the real deal now according to the website it'll be 849.99 Canadian which translates to about 670 US dollars so you know those higher price points that probably $700 price point for this machine as well but it's a light gun game and that's a lot cooler to me than something like you know an X-Men cabinet I think it looks great you know the uh, design of it is awesome looking of course you have all the graphics on it that look exactly like the original arcade game so that's super cool as well but there's a main difference here that I actually really like if you look at the mounted guns on these if you remember with Terminator 2 the guns were mounted meaning that you would just put your elbows like on the top of the arcade cab and you would just hold the gun in your hand and you couldn't detach them from the actual system but these look to be detachable via like a wire or something like that so you can do the mounted thing or you could take them off and play them like a traditional light gun game so that leads me to believe that we're still going to start seeing more traditional light gun games maybe a house of the dead arcade one-up cabinet down the road it's been heavily rumored supposedly it's an actual thing of course they have worked with sega before with golden axe but i think this is a really cool thing i do wonder if there's going to be other games included on this arcade one up because it just seems like everything is t2 related and we haven't gotten any more additional information now of course we don't have a release date for this i believe the canadian retailer actually took down the listing for this but i mean it's the internet and if you put a listing up for something as interesting as the terminator 2 arcade one up cabinet people are obviously going to take notice and they're obviously going to make videos on it and take screenshots of it and that's how we have all this information but i'm definitely on board with this arcade one up you have reeled me back in you have gotten my interest once again because like gun games Games and racing games are really what I want to see arcade one up do more of these early 90s to mid 90s arcade um, games that were based on racing games or based on light gun games because those are the games you can actually make really interesting people can modify their standard arcade one up cabinet to run whatever they want on it but when you introduce a steering wheel and a light gun things get a little bit trickier so I'll be looking for more information on this who knows when it's actually going to come out because we still don't have any information on the killer instinct release date but yes you reeled me in arcade one up i'm back i'm back Next up, you might remember a couple days ago on the channel, we talked about some changes coming to the Nintendo Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShops. And a lot of people, like I assume they would, were like, eh, it's not a big deal, you know? They're not taking credit cards anymore, who cares? But that sort of, to me, was a sign of things to come with this. If they're starting to change how monetization policies are done to where you can purchase these games, obviously more changes are going to be on the horizon with this as well. And surprisingly, it looks like there are more changes coming to the Nintendo Wii U and 
3DS eShop services as well. Now, this information is coming to us from Barry from Impact Game Station, another dude I've known for a very long time. Make sure you guys check out his channel as well. I'll have a link to it in the description box down below. But Barry essentially got an email from a developer, I'm going to assume is from a developer, and it said the following things. I wish to inform you that it's been decided to cease the acceptance of submissions for new Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShop titles released by the end of the current physical year, effective from April 1st, 2022. These new titles should be lot checked approved within three months after the submission deadline. The Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShops will remain active and submissions of patches will be processed until further notice. Please take the deadlines into consideration and in planning your upcoming 3DS and Wii U digital releases. Thank you very much for understanding and continuous support on the 3DS and Wii U consoles during the past years. Kind regards, Nintendo of Europe European Business Publisher. So once again, I don't think a lot of people are heading to the Wii U or 3DS eShops to buy the latest and greatest games that release on these. It's only been about seven games released on the 3DS in 2021, and there was only like one Wii U game released in 2021 on the eShop. But still, this is yet another sign that these stores could be potentially closing a lot sooner than a lot of people would like them to be. And when you consider how many virtual console games are available on the Wii U and 3DS, especially when you compare it to how Nintendo is handling the Nintendo Switch, Switch Online, I really think this is a bigger deal than people are making it out to be. Now we have two instances of weird changes coming to the Wii U and 3DS eShops, and it's like, how many more changes are going to come before you just eventually say, hey, you know what, we're shutting these down for good. All the games that were available on the Wii U and the 3DS via the eShop, whether they're virtual console games or games designed with these consoles in mind that were brand new indie games or something like that, well, you can no longer buy these games. And it just sucks to see things like this. Like, I do understand the business aspect of it you don't want to have these shops available forever because obviously it takes time resources and money in order to keep these shops up and running but it's still it's just like i hate to see video games disappear so if you are a wii u or a 3ds player and you might want to start you know stocking up on things like games for these systems because i really feel like we're going to get an announcement much sooner than later about these stores closing and really i wouldn't be surprised if these stores end up closing in 2022 and finally, we have yet another leak to talk about. It seems like this is a very leaky episode of RGT, but hey, that's a good thing because we're learning about new stuff. And this one involves a new Nintendo Switch game that was allegedly leaked on a Russian website that's coming out very soon, as in the end of September. Now, the Darksiders franchise, of course, has great representation on the Nintendo Switch. You have Darksiders 1, you have Darksiders 2, and you have Darksiders Genesis. Of course, the publisher of these games, THQ Nordic, does definitely support the Nintendo Switch. They they bring a lot of games over to the system. Some of them are older, some of them are day and date or around day and date with other releases for other platforms, but they definitely seem to be having a lot of success on the Nintendo Switch. Well, according to a Russian website that was up for a few days and now when you try to go to it, it's a 404, but of course, like we said with Terminator 2, this is the internet and nothing ever really disappears. Darksiders 3 appears to be coming to the Nintendo Switch at the end of September. Now, what's interesting about this is the fact that Darksiders 1 one and two were both games that released on the Xbox 360, whereas Darksiders 3 was a game that only came out on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, which were the modern consoles at the time. And I feel like we're starting to see a shift sort of with how developers and publishers are putting games on the Nintendo Switch, sort of shying away from the 360 and PS3 era and more so getting into the PS4 and the Xbox One era of games available on the Nintendo Switch. Now, Darksiders 3 was an interesting game because it definitely sort of strayed away from the Darksiders 1 and 2 formula. Darksiders 1 and 2 kind of felt like a Legend of Zelda in some sorts with the puzzle aspects of the game and how your character was always sort of getting new abilities and stuff like that. And it was definitely a more of an action adventure game, whereas Darksiders 3 went in more of a Souls direction. So if you're a fan of games like Dark Souls or Demon Souls or any of these Souls games, Bloodborne as well, this is a game that you'll probably want to have on your radar. I'm definitely curious to see how this game ends up making the transition to the Nintendo Switch. Of course, this is technically a rumor, but I mean, there was a box art on there as well, and the box art looked pretty convincing, pretty much in the style that THQ Nordic actually releases their games on the Nintendo Switch as far as the box art is concerned. But I am interested to see how this game runs and performs on the Nintendo Switch, and more importantly, the price point of this game. Now, like I said, THQ Nordic does sometimes put older games onto the Nintendo Switch, but they've always done a decent 
decent job of pricing them 30 40 bucks something like that not a full 60 that you would see when this game first launched so i think this would make an interesting addition to the nintendo switch library of course with the late september release date it almost kind of goes into that train of thought that there might be a nintendo direct in the month of september to talk about games for the holiday season and talk about new third party projects that are coming out during the holiday season as well you know third party developers love to just sort of put games out there during the holiday season to get those big holiday sales and things of that nature and i think darksiders 3 would be a game that definitely fits that criteria now did you play darksiders 3 is this a game that interests you let me know in the comment section down below Alrighty, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video. Make sure you guys check out Mike B and Impact Game Station's channels in the description box down below. They do great content, probably better content than I do, and they're good friends of mine. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.